Hey kids, I hope you're doing well. Last week we started learning about God's kingdom and God's king. We learned that God promised that one day his people would be part of his wonderful, perfect kingdom. And that promise is for us too. We also saw that Jesus is the king of God's kingdom. Now, this week, we're in Matthew chapter 19 and 20, where Jesus teaches about how someone becomes a part of God's kingdom. Now, before we get into that, I want you to think about what kind of person would you think is someone God would want in his kingdom? What do you think they would have to do to get in? Maybe you can stop the video now and think about it or talk about it with the people that you're watching with. I think normally we think that it's the person who's really good and who follows all the rules. I know the St. Luke Sunday School was learning about the Ten Commandments last year before lockdown started. Maybe you can still remember those. Don't you think that someone who keeps all the commandments and prays and goes to church and is kind to others, that will be the kind of person who would definitely get into God's kingdom? Or maybe the person who seems like they're blessed by God. So maybe they keep all the rules and then it looks like God has blessed them because they have power and lots of money and they're really successful. Now, we read in Matthew 19 and 20 that that's exactly what the Jesus disciples thought too. But Jesus taught them something very different about how someone becomes a part of the kingdom of God. And he did that with three different pictures or stories. First, he shows them that the people who can enter the kingdom are those who are like little children who come to Jesus. So the Bible teaches us that there were some children who wanted to come to Jesus, but the disciples didn't think they were very important. And they tried to shoo them away. Go away, go away. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me because the kingdom of heaven belongs to people like them. Now, my best friend has a little baby who is one year old now. He is so cute and his name is Mulisa. Now, when Mulisa needs something, he always goes straight to his mom or his dad and he'll put his hands out and wait for them to give it to him. He doesn't think that he has to first give his mom something for her to give him food or something else he needs, but he just trusts that she will do it. He doesn't think he needs to earn it. Now, the older we get, the more people tell us that we don't get anything for free. I'm sure some of the older kids would have heard that by now. But a little child just goes to their parent without thinking they need to earn their food or something else they need. So Jesus was saying that like a little child who doesn't try to earn stuff, they just go with empty hands. That's how we get into the kingdom of heaven. There's nothing we can do to become a part of God's kingdom. All our good works and following the rules or our money or our power or anything else in the world won't get us in. It's only by coming to Jesus and trusting him like those little children did. Next. We read that there was a rich young man who asked Jesus how he could get into the kingdom, what good deeds he should do. He said to Jesus that he kept all the commandments and the disciples thought that God must be happy with him and that God had blessed him because he had a lot of money. But Jesus said something very strange to him. He told him that he should sell everything he had and give the money to the poor and follow him. Only that way would he get into the kingdom. You see, even though this man looked like he was doing everything right on the outside, Jesus saw his heart and he knew that this man loved money more than he loved God. And this man loved money so much that he wouldn't want to give it up to follow Jesus. 
You see, boys and girls, God cares about our hearts, what it is that we love. Even though this man kept all the other commandments and he seemed so powerful and wonderful to everyone, he didn't love God more than everything else, so he would miss out on the kingdom. Now, that makes me think, sometimes I don't love God more than anything else. Sometimes I love other things more. Sometimes I'm more worried about what my friends will think about me or getting good marks at school so that I can be successful. It makes me wonder if there's now something I must do to make myself love God more so that I can be saved. But in Matthew 19 verse 26, Jesus says that it's impossible for us to do that. It's impossible for us to make ourselves love God, but God can do it. Nothing is impossible for God. He is the one who can change our hearts so that we can love him and want to follow Jesus. So it's not about the work that we do or the money and the power that we have, but it's God who makes us able to become part of his kingdom. When we realize we can't do anything, and we ask him to save us and to change our hearts so that we can love him and want to follow him. Now, the third story Jesus tells us is about people. It's a story about people who were hired to work in a vineyard for a day. Now, normally when people work, they get paid for every hour that they work. So if you work more hours, you get paid more. But in this story that Jesus told, the people who worked for the whole day got paid exactly the same as those who only worked for one hour. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. But Jesus used this to explain that the boss wanted to be generous. To him, it wasn't about getting what you deserved. So he used this to teach that we don't earn our way into God's kingdom but God is generous to us and he made a way for people whether they are Jewish or not Jewish to become part of his people and part of his kingdom and his kingdom works totally different to the way we would expect in our world people think that you have to earn everything and that you don't get anything for free and that the most powerful people are the most important but that's not how it works in God's kingdom. Jesus says that in his kingdom, the first will be last and the last will be first. You see, his kingdom is completely different. It's not the people who the world thinks are great and good and important. It's the people who come to Jesus like little children, realizing that they have nothing to earn their way into his kingdom. It's the people who love God more than everything and they follow Jesus. Those are the people who get into God's kingdom. And we can't do that ourselves, but God is generous and he gives us what we, do, we don't deserve. God made it possible because of what we're gonna learn about in the next few weeks, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that we can be saved and follow him and live with him as our king. So boys and girls, Matthew shows us that there is nothing we can do to make it into God's kingdom. All we can do is go to Jesus and ask him to save us, to change our hearts so that we can love him. And that is how we become part of his amazing kingdom. Have you done that? If you haven't and you would like to, I'm going to say a prayer that you can also say to God. And I'm going to ask him to make you a part of his kingdom with Jesus as your king. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you made a way for us to become a part of your wonderful kingdom. Thank you that your kingdom is so different and we don't have to do anything or be rich or powerful or important to be a part of it. I know there's nothing I can do to be good enough for you. I know that it's only because of what Jesus did that I can be part of your kingdom. Jesus, please will you save me?
Please, will you change my heart by your Holy Spirit so that I can love you and follow you. Amen.